Sometimes you just need a snack before you get to your workout, you know? What's up guys, it's Adam from Cinnabar Calisthenics here and today I want to talk to you guys about one of the fundamental calisthenics exercises which is the tuck planche. Now the tuck planche might be the first progression towards a straddle planche or a full planche but the tuck planche is still a very difficult skill and one that a lot of beginners struggle with and it can be pretty demoralizing because it's the first step towards your end goal but it's still very hard. So in this video, I want to show you a few progressions before the tuck planche, and then I just want to give you guys a few cues, a couple things to think about as you're practicing your progressions and eventually working your way to the tuck planche. Now, one thing I would highly recommend if you're thinking about working on the tuck planche is to buy a pair of parallettes. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. These are $30. I got them off on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. Now, the reason for getting a pair of parallettes is that it's going to make any planche work significantly easier. If you've ever done an L-sit on bars and then tried to do them on the floor, the difference is night and day. It's significantly easier to do them on bars than it is on floor, and the same thing applies whenever we're doing something like a tuck planche, straddle planche, any planche variation. Now the first thing I'll say about the tuck planche is that it is a very weird position to be in. We're not typically used to this. So if you're trying to jump straight into the tuck planche and you're finding it hard, that's expected because our bodies aren't really used to being in a position like this, where we have all of this weight on our shoulder, we're leaning forward, our arms are locked out, our elbows are locked out. So it is weird. It's gonna take some time to get used to, and that's why if you're struggling with the tuck planche, I would recommend doing planche leans first. So to do a planche lean, we're going to start out in like a push-up position, and then we're going to just slide our body forward until we're in this lean position. There's a few things I want you to focus on when you're doing these planche leans. The first one is keeping your body rigid, like from your chest down. You don't want to get into this position and then your hips are dipping, you know, your body's just all loose. Like you want to be in a rigid position with your body tight as you move forward. Another thing you really want to focus on here, and this is a bad habit a lot of people build, including myself, is to push your shoulder blades out. Once you get into that lean position, you don't want your shoulder blades to be depressed like this. You want them to be out. You want to actively be pushing through the bars or through the floor and getting these shoulder blades out. So when you tie all of that together, once you get into the plant lean, it should be a very active position. It looks like you're just hanging out in a position, but it should be very active. So what I mean by this is when you get into this lean, this would be a pretty passive position. Like it might look like I'm in a planche lean, but I'm not being very active. Whereas when I push through my shoulder blades and keep my body tight, that adds a lot of stress to the planche lean. My body's working way more. I'm getting my body into good form to help me with the planche lean, to activate the muscles that I'm trying to activate, as opposed to just kind of passively hanging in position. There might be some lean, but you wanna push those shoulder blades out, really focus on keeping your body tight so that you can maximize your gains and more quickly hit the next progression. I already know what you're gonna ask. How many sets, how many reps should I be doing? Now this is a little difficult to answer, but when I was first starting out, I would usually shoot for about 60 seconds total of hold time. Now that doesn't mean 60 seconds at once, that just means in total across all the sets that I did, I would try to target 60 seconds. So maybe I can hold a lean for 15 seconds, and do that four times, or maybe it's 10 seconds, I do that six times. But for me personally, the 60 seconds of accumulated holds felt like a pretty good range for me to work with, and allowed me to feel recovered by the time my next training session came around. Now, light pull-ups. I would say that the planche is something that also benefits from doing often. I've talked about this in my pull-ups video with the grease the groove technique where you just do a little bit every day. I think a similar approach really helps with the planche, but with that said, if you're finding these exercises difficult, it's pushing you near your max, 
feel free to ease off a little bit. If by the next training session you feel weaker than you did the last one, then maybe take a little bit more time off, reduce your volume a little bit. So it's this delicate balancing act where you're trying to get in a lot of volume regularly so that you can make a lot of progress, but at the same time, giving yourself enough time to recover. Once you've done the planche leans for a while, we can start working on our first progression towards the tuck planche. Now this one's a bit easier because you're gonna still have a little assistance and it doesn't require like a band set up or anything. We're just gonna use our feet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into a position like this, kind of with our knees on the ground, and we're gonna start getting into a tuck planche position. You're gonna push your shoulder blades out and then we're just gonna try and lightly take our feet off the ground. If your feet are on the ground, that's okay. All we're trying to do here is to give ourselves a little bit of assistance without fully committing to the tuck planche. So if I were right here and my feet are on the ground, there's still a lot of my weight that's being supported by my feet. But if I just try to lift them off ever so slightly, I can start to flirt with that tuck planche position. Now I think of this similar to a wall assisted handstand or training wheels on a kid's bike. If you've ever seen a kid ride a bike with training wheels, they get to a point to where they have the training wheels on, but they don't really need them. You know, they're riding around and maybe every once in a while the wheels touch, but in general, they're riding the bike. We're doing a similar thing here. We wanna treat our feet as our training wheels so that we can get into a position, have our feet just lightly touching the ground, and we can add more support through our feet if needed, or take it off to start to begin to commit to that tough planche position. So when you get into this foot assisted tuck planche, you know, you might start out here, you get kind of comfortable, my feet are like barely, barely touching the ground. Then you can start to lift one foot off, maybe swap feet like this. One quick note here on the foot assisted tuck planche. Let's say you're doing that, you decide to test lifting your feet off the ground to see if you can do the full tuck planche and you can. You might be tempted every time you train the planche to immediately jump into that tuck planche to see if you can hold it. Resist the temptation to do that. If you are close, that's okay. But if it still feels like it's not there, don't test your max every time you're training because that's basically what you're doing. So if it doesn't feel close, just accept that fact, continue with foot assisted tuck planche, do the planche leans, grind that out for a bit, and then maybe two, three weeks later, try the full tuck planche again. Once you start doing full tuck planches, you'll probably notice that your form isn't ideal because when we get into the tuck planche position, we want our back to be pretty flat with the ground. And what you might find is that you get in the tuck planche position and you're like right here. Your back is very angled towards the ground. It's nowhere near parallel to the ground, which is what we want. That's normal, it's gonna take time. This is why I recommend recording yourself so that you can see the progress and then also make adjustments during your training. So when you're just starting out, your tuck planche might look something like this. What we want is something a little more like this. Now the reason I bring that up is because when I first started doing tuck planches, my back was not flat. It was very angled towards the ground. Just because you don't have perfect form doesn't mean you shouldn't train it. Still train it, slowly work on elevating your hips, record yourself so that you can see how much progress you're making, but just know when you're just starting out with tuck planche, don't expect perfect form right away. That's how it was when I first started training and eventually through time, I got to the point to where my back got flat, if not a little over flat. So when you finally get that tuck planche and your feet are off the ground, I would recommend starting with that in your training, doing a couple sets of that, but then going back to some easier variations. Don't just sit there and grind away on that tuck planche because your form's gonna degrade very quickly. You're gonna get tired very quickly. So get a couple of those sets in with the hard tuck planche that's really pushing yourself and then go back to some of the easier variations like the foot assisted tuck planche or the planche leans. Well, there you have it. That is my tutorial on the tuck planche and some of my progressions to build towards the tuck planche. One final piece of advice here is to stay patient. The planche is a difficult skill. All of the progressions are very difficult. This stuff isn't gonna happen overnight. 
So be patient, work on your progressions, stay consistent, and you will make progress. If you guys have any questions for me, feel free to leave a comment below. If you like the video, please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you guys have any feedback for me, any questions, comments, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get to you. I'll see you guys next week. Thank mm -hmm. you.